Brokati Hawa, Brokati Hawa Shai, Brokati Hawa, Brokati Hawa Shai, Brokati Hawa, Brokati Hawa Bashim Yawa Shai Bashim, Chakodash. Sorry. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millicent with you well. Salutations to the hopeful elect out there. You I came to Sadakim that do the singing and most truth <laughs> and sincerity on the free Shaman. All right, this week's topic is going to be entitled Who the Sanctions Really Hurt? Uh, this is inspired by yesterday President Joe Biden announcing the fact that they will be putting sanctions, uh, increasing the sanctions um, on Russia, such as banning the import of Russian oil. Now, Ron Paul of the Ron Paul Liberty Report put out some very inf inciting information on this topic. For one, as the title says, who is this really hurting? Is this hurting Vladimir Putin? Putin? Absolutely not. It's, it's hurting the average American, right? Because the elites that control different governments, you know, if gas goes up, what well, does it matter to them? They have millions of dollars. It's the average people that it hurts. And they can't take blame for that right so they have to put the blame on someone else on someone else so over here even though you're paying more at the pump they got to say they can't say it's their fault they got to say it's vladimir putin's fault right that oil is going up and you pay more at the gas tank well stephen colbert all right a left-leaning um political comedian type dude he has his own show he said look i'm willing to pay 15 dollars for ukraine's um independence and such at the pump and and then jokingly says at the end of the day it doesn't really matter to him because he owns a tesla so you see the minds of these elites that they don't give a hell about the common person the guys is oh we're doing this for um UK ukrainian independence because russia is terrorizing ukraine however another important stat that um was brought out on the ron paul liberty report was that so far the numbers have been released since russia's soft invasion um, of Ukraine, only about 400 casualties, right? Now, what about when the United States went in Iraq? 4,000 casualties in three weeks. When the United States went into Iraq, it was almost 7,000 in three weeks. So you see the hypocrisy. You see the double standards, right? Um, and also, Zelensky is changing his stance on the United Nations. It's very different than what I heard on the radio this morning. They, they, on the radio, they're saying Zelensky is uh, um, boy, uh, uh, pretty much on the stance of, oh, we need our defenses and such. But news is actually, his actual quotations are, he's sort of um, underplaying, joining the, underplaying joining the United Nations. He's actually talking down on, on NATO. I'm sorry, I keep saying the United Nations. He's actually talking down on NATO that he doesn't want to do it anymore, you know? And uh, I've mentioned that this whole thing um, is one giant wealth transfer. Well, check this out. Also brought out in the Ron Paul Liberty Report, you know, that um, these Russian assets, these Russian stocks were banned on a lot of um, European and American uh, exchanges. However, China was able to buy up these Russian assets for pennies on a dollar, man. They're cheap. And it makes you wonder how deep does this rabbit hole go because we know that Joe Biden has entangling alliances with the Chinese and the Ukrainians. So how much of this is staged to try to transfer that much wealth into the hands of the Chinese? It's, it's a lot of, it, you know, it just makes you wonder how much of it really truly is orchestrated. And will they orchestrate things to make tons of money at the expense of, at the expense of lives and wealth of the average person? They have and they've been doing that for centuries, man. You know? So, many lives could be lost, different ge geopolitical strategies could be made, and a lot of money could be made, you know, at the expense of the average folk. Hey, man, the scriptures don't lie when it says never trust the enemy, you know, uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 10. There's no true, um, you know, you can't take anything the so-called white man does and say for face value, you know, and his track record, his track record proved that. You know, as it says in the book of Psalms 55, you know, the, the words of his lips are smoother than butter. Oh, we're here to plot treaties. We're here to um, protect this nation's uh, sovereignty. And, you know, if you believe that, and a lot of people actually do believe that. A lot of people sit in front of CNN. <laughs> CNN, CNN, MSNBC, and just gobble it up. Mainly a lot of people from the older generation 
that don't even know the concept of going to alternate alternative media on the internet. You know, certain people just stick to cable news, and you know, it's 2022, and there's still people that just believe whatever they see on cable news. You know, the Mosai has set up his prophets, the apostles, the elders, the brothers under the banner of great millstones, and the different, um, you know, different groups out there that's teaching the truth and the ammo truth and sincerity. All right, um, and he's revealed secrets to them. You know, secrets of the elite, secrets of what the hell is going on, how to decipher things, and how do we decipher things? The main filtering agent we use is the scriptures. Revelations, the third chapter and the 18th verse, speaks about an eye salve, right? The eye salve, um, which is what the owl has in the back of his eye, is able to have him see through his, in the dark, man. You know, so the Lord gave us sort of like nocturnal vision to see through the guises and bullshit of what's really going on, man. You know what I'm saying? So this is hurting you. And another thing, too, I'll say this, why it's just truly great manipulation. Oil is not scarce. It's not a rare commodity. It's not something like gold, which is very finite. Oil, like diamonds, has a arbitrary value, all right? It's, it, has, it has a value that is not coherent with what it's truly worth, all right? Because the earth produces oil in abundance, you know, and a lot of not a lot of people know this, but people know this. Now, the lie started with the Rockefellers, um, you know, as as people made the uh, switch from coal to more uh, natural gas and oil. Um, that's when the Rockefellers started the lie that's saying that this commodity is scarce because it comes from fossil fuels. It comes from fossils. Oil is gathered. Uh, from fossils and you know you need fossils in the earth for millions of air, uh, years you need fossils in the earth for millions of years to produce oil now we know that's complete a complete lie you know what i'm saying there's no there's no fossil fuels fossils you don't need fossils to produce oil the earth produces it naturally in certain locations in an abundance you know um so that's a complete lie all right so the fact that these prices are manipulated up that's really controlled by you know opec and these different they come to a, a, an agreement, man, all right? They come to an agreement. Because if I know this information, all right, you think these billionaire oil companies don't know this information? At the end of the day, that oil, you know, you can make a, you can get a shit ton of it. But if people know that, it will be dirt cheap. So just like how you have the diamond market where these different jewelers say, look, man, we're not going to make this carrot of diamond worth this much or that much. We have to come to a set of price so we all can make money. The same thing they do with oil in these different OPEC nations, man. All right, because guess what? The United States has so much oil, man. All right, the United States is the number one exporter of oil, unless that change. They have an abundance of oil. We sell oil in America to other nations. So why is the gas prices up? You know, because certain politicians will choose to rather say, let's export the oil. All right. And then that exportation, the taxes are involved, raises the price of oil. But that has to be some sort of backdoor deal, man. All right? Hey, when this guy Trump was in office, he was encouraging fracking. Say what you want about Trump, but the guy was a pure nationalist, man. All right? All of his interests, all of his vested interests was in American vested interest. All right? So they were doing stuff like fracking and all this type of stuff, pretty much using, relying, um relying on the energy of the United States to take care of the United States. One thing he also didn't want to do is he didn't want to tamper with the situation in Ukraine, you know? And look, you got companies like Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, um, all these other military companies, man, their vested interest is war, all right? It's war, even if, and, and it, when they, when they want war, they don't want a war with a, a goal in mind. It's, they don't want something like World War II where there's a set enemy or a set... They want a war where it can be prolonged. So they'll tell you, so this is a war on terrorism, this is a war for independence and, the, and democracy because you can't shoot that stuff in the head and it'll be the end of it, you know? Their, their whole thing is like occupancy, right? How can we occupy and continually send out us, um, send out military aid to Ukraine and these different other nations, Okay. Because it's 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 a, it's a simple concept of you know it's better to have a cow than to have a glass of milk because you can continually milk the cow. So these are sort of the wars that they create. They create wars now that can be sustained. 
up, you know what I'm saying? So they could continue making money. That guy, Trump, he wasn't doing much of that. So they had to get him out, you know? Um, very similar to what happened in Venezuela concerning the sanction, the sanction issues. When they wanted Nicolas Maduro out, they was putting sanctions on Ecuador. But was that really hurting Nicolas Maduro or the average person in Venezuela? They saw an increase in price inflation, all right? Because they had to pay more to get their goods. So the average person suffers, you know what I'm saying? The average person in Russia and Ukraine are suffering from the sanctions, not the elite oligarchs, okay? The average person in the United States is suffering from the uh, uh, price in gas. And look, oil going up, oil going up doesn't just affect gas prices, all right? That affects the price of goods, the price of different things, because, for example, all right, if, you, if, if, if it's more gas required for the trucking company to take, um, you know, certain goods from one state to the next, all right, then that's going to affect the price of goods, right? So the price of oil going up doesn't just stop at oil, man. That's like if you see your food prices going up. You're seeing everything else around you going up because it, it affects a lot of other things, man, right? So how much is it, you know, what would be the tipping point? What would be the tipping point where Americans say, um, enough is enough and start taking to the streets and taking actions or whatever who knows They'll, they might push him to that point because you know the scriptures do speak about civil unrest happening in the book of second Ezra, the 15th chapter you know but the american people have become so docile so tame um you know mainly primarily the food they eat and such you know has made them completely um, um docile and tame all right, that the government gets away with more and more uh, thing, man. You know, if anything you should learn is that the government involvement in things, all right, only make things more expensive, all right? Whenever there's social reforms, government reforms, whatever they, they put their, their hands in, it becomes uh, more expensive, man. That's how come Obamacare, it wiped out the private the private guys. Obamacare, if you was on salary, you knew when Obamacare happened, you was getting less of your money because parts of your check was not going towards Obamacare, which wiped out the, uh, the private or, or, you know, upper middle class people that had their own private practice of, of the medical industry, man. All right? Because you can't compete with government prices. Like, look at the, look at why school so expensive, you know? Because it's government loans. It's, 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 it's all done through the government. So whatever the government gets their hand involved, there's no true capitalism, as American claims. There's no private competition in happening. All right, so the price of any everything just goes the hell up. If there was competition, if there was competition for your school, if there was competition by schools to get your kids to come to their school, the price would go down because they're trying to make money. All right, like if you look at LASIK eye surgery when it first came out years ago, it was like what fourteen thousand to get it done. Now you can get that shit done for like under six hundred because it's still something that's done privately. If the government was involved, it would probably be damn near like heart surgery. Still super expensive. I'm sure if heart surgery was left without the government involved, no social um, government um, response with, with, with that, then shit, man, who knows? Well, heart, heart surgery could probably be a thousand, couple thousand dollars, man. They have the, the technology to do it, you know? So whenever the government says they're involved or trying to help the people, just know it's a lot of times for their own detriment, man. You know what I'm saying? And, who, and why is that? Because a so-called white man, all right, he deals treacherous, treacherously, man. Okay, they have these think things. They formulate different um, 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 laws and decrees in secret, all right? But they, they know what will be the repercussions of them, man. All right? It's to keep the people in a, in a fucked up modern state. That's why the scripture says when a wicked wear a rule, the people mourn, but the right, when the righteous bear rule, the people re rejoice, man. You know, and who the hell is really rejoicing but a small few? Okay? Only a small few is rejoicing, all right? The ones that have the foresight of things that's going to happen and the ones that are at the very top, okay? Thankfully, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh we know that this won't, won't go on much longer because there is an end in sight, all right? What's that end? World War Three taking place, all right, which will involve... America and Russia, but will not start with America and Russia. It will start in the Middle East. All right, the scripture says the least of the flocks will draw them out, which is uh, the state of Israel is going to, the least of the flock of the so-called Jew, Amalek, all right, which resides in the, in the land of Israel, all right, they're going to start the, they're going to be the uh, ignition to World War Three because it, there's different skirmishes that's going on over there in the 
Middle East, man. We know that Russia is tied to Saudi Arabia and America, and America is tied to different European nations. And we know that Iraq, I saw, we know that Iran is tied to Russia and Syria, all right, which is also allied with China. So there's a whole bunch of entangling alliances there. But it's those gutter rats over there, they're going to be the main um, antagonists to pushing this thing, you know. But the stages are being set, all right. The rumors of war mentioned in Matthew 24 is already being set, all right. Sedition is already brewing in the, in the air, and civil unrest is already brewing in the air, man. All right, and we're all for it. The quicker this things happens, the quicker these things happen, the quicker we could be in Yahushua's kingdom and join his rhythm with him. So hey, bring it on and speed it up. With that, give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shah, Bashim, Chakudash, the belongs to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, which well. Citations to the hopeful elect out there. You are Kim to Zadakim. They do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. Shalom.